Time now for a check of the top business news stories. Our business editor, Kate Moody, is here. Good evening to you, Kate. And our France taking more steps towards uh, relaxing some of the COVID containment measures. But today was particularly important for the tourism industry, wasn't it? Yeah, Disneyland often calls itself the happiest place on earth. And outside of Paris today, uh, it may really have been that it, the theme park has reopened for the first time since October the 30th. It's one of Europe's biggest tourist attractions, welcoming around 10 million visitors per year before the pandemic. Attendance has been capped for now. Visitors must still wear masks on park grounds, uh, despite the looser rules for mask wearing outdoors in the rest of France. And characters like Mickey Mouse will have to keep their distance from visitors. Other amusement parks had reopened earlier this month and crowds have flooded back. The industry hopes that this will mark a turning point and kick off a strong summer season. Je sais combien nous avons toutes et tous attendu ce moment avec impatience après une période inédite. Car au-delà de Disneyland Paris, c'est tout un secteur qui se réjouit, celui du tourisme. Notre réouverture marque une étape majeure dans sa relance. Les restaurants, les hôtels, les attractions et tous ces lieux de convivialité sont essentiels dans la vie des Français. United States and United Kingdom have reached a truce in a long-running trade dispute just two days after striking a similar deal with the European Union. The 17-year-old spat saw the two sides accusing each other of giving illegal subsidies to plane makers Airbus and Boeing, respectively. Trade negotiators have agreed to, pu to pause punitive tariffs for five years, a move welcomed by the Scotch whiskey industry, among others, uh, that had been facing tariffs. As a former EU member, the UK had to negotiate with the US separately. The deal now clears the way for transatlantic post-Brexit trade talks between Washington and London. The European Union has approved Greece's spending plans, bringing it one step closer to receiving some 30 billion euros from the bloc's 750 billion euro coronavirus recovery fund. On Wednesday, Portugal and Spain became the first member states to receive the green light. European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen is trying, traveling to most of the 23 member states which have submitted their funding requests. She'll be endorsing plans that meet EU requirements, including a percentage earmarked for digital and green investment. The plan was designed here in Greece, and it will spur a growth, growth that will be led by the Greek people, and it will be owned by the Greek people. And there is no doubt that it will deeply transform Greek's economy, which will embrace the twin green and digital transition. Let's check in on the day's trading action now. Losses of nearly half a percentage point for London's FTSE 100 today. Uh, slight gains in Paris and Frankfurt, as data showed, 0.3% inflation for the eurozone in May. That's on track for the ECB's annualized target of 2%. Shares of German drugs company CureVac tumbled 44% uh, as it revealed that its COVID-19 vaccine was only 47% effective. That throws into doubt the hundreds of millions of doses that have been ordered by the European Union. Over on Wall Street, the Dow Jones and S&P 500 are trading lower for the second day in a row. Uh, the Dow Jones down about two-thirds of a percentage point this hour, the Nasdaq resisting up 0.9. Investors have been slightly rattled by the Federal Reserve's plans to lift interest rates in 2023 earlier than expected. New unemployment claims, meanwhile, rose slightly last week, reversing a seven-week downward trend. El Salvador has been dealt a blow by the World Bank, which says it will not assist with its implementation of Bitcoin as legal tender. The country is the first in the world to approve the digital currency, but the plan still faces hurdles. Monty Francis has the story. It's called Bitcoin Beach. On the coast of El Salvador, the surfing village of El Zante is the first to use the cryptocurrency. A new national law legalizes Bitcoin as legal tender, and the government is hoping to roll it out to the entire country. We're trying to create a new economy. Not everyone has access to a bank account, so we created the Bitcoin initiative, which is money that's easy to move, easy to use, and in the end, it's a method of exchange. But the plan has already hit its first big roadblock. The World Bank said on Wednesday it would not assist with El Salvador's implementation of Bitcoin. In a statement, it said, while the government did approach us for assistance on Bitcoin, this is not something the World Bank can support given the environmental and transparency shortcomings. In addition to concerns about the currency's volatility, those environmental concerns have to do with the massive amount of energy computers use to generate the cryptocurrency. 
Two decades ago, the country abandoned its own currency for the U.S. dollar. Today, it's estimated that 70 percent of El Salvadorans do not have bank accounts, and many receive their income through remittances that come with big fees. The hope is that Bitcoin could drive investment in the country and increase the wealth of its citizens. Thank you very much indeed. Our business editor, Kate Moody, thank you so much. Do stay with us. Up next, we're getting an update on the Euro 2020. Stay tuned for that.